ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank one of my subscribers, Doug Williams, for this story. And I had to laugh when I saw this. And I can only speak from my experience, and I can tell you <laughs> this is definitely not true. So this came out in HuffPost July 30th, 2020. White people say they're allies at work. Black and Latina women disagree, and I disagree too. Y'all are not our allies on jobs. If anything, you're more likely to screw us over on a job than be an ally. That is true. That is definite. Look, in my career, I've seen black people get fired for things they didn't do. I didn't see nary white person in the building stand up for them. I have seen black people written up on jobs for the same thing you would see white people doing. And not one white person, man or woman, stood up and said, no, you can't punish them for that reason. Or you can't do this. They say nothing. Okay. And I doubt if you'll find too many black people in this country that feel you are allies to us on jobs. Okay. I'm just telling you, I haven't seen it in my career. And I doubt if any of these younger people out here have seen it in their short careers because it don't exist. This ally crap is a joke. It don't exist. You are not our allies. So let's get into this. A new survey find a huge disconnect between white people and people of color, view white allyship in the workplace. You damn right we don't see that as the same. I guess they think because they walk past you and say hello, that makes them an ally. No, that don't make you an ally at all. If you are a white person who sees yourself as an ally to coworkers of other races and ethnicity, it's time for a reality check. Many of your colleagues of color probably disagree, and I wholeheartedly disagree. 82% of white men and 81% of white women see themselves as allies to colleagues of color at work, according to a June survey of 7,400 U.S. adults by leanin.org and SurveyMonkey. A majority of white people in the survey identified their own strongest allies as an equal mix of races and genders. But women of color say they encounter a different reality in the workplace and they are not likely to count white people among their allies. And I agree with that 100%. Just 10% of black women and 19% of Latinas say most of their strongest allies were white. And that's a low percentage, by the way, that's low. And that if they are fortunate enough to have anyone vigorously advocating for them, only 45% of Black women and 55% of Latinas said they had strong allies at work. Leanin.org did not highlight results for Black or Latino men or people of other races due to small sample sizes. The survey defined allyship as using one's power or position to support or advocate for coworkers with less power or status. Absolutely not. Y'all don't do that. Y'all don't put nothing on the line for us ever. Okay. Not on no job. No, no. I have to agree with the survey results. Uh-uh. I, I, I've been out there for a long time. I have never seen it. Never. From the disconnect between the answers of white people and those of women of color, it is clear that not everyone shares the same understanding of what that looks like in practice. Rachel Thomas, co-founder and CEO of Lean In, said it's critical for everybody to be aware of that women of color and particularly black women 
or having a markedly different experience at work than their white peers. It is our job as white allies to self-educate, she said. I think too often we fall into the trap of asking women of color or other people with marginalized identity how we can help, we ha uh, what we can do. And we putting our oneness on them when the, um, yeah, when it should be on you. So in other words, we shouldn't have to tell you when you see something wrong on a job being done to a black person. You got two eyes and they do work and you don't ever get up and intervene. That is the problem. But you'll admit when nobody else is around that look like you, that can hear what you say, because I've seen this too. What they'll do is they'll stay quiet and then that one high IQ person will come over and admit they see what's going on and they think it's wrong, but they make sure they say this out of the earshot of the people that look just like them. You know, it's, it's, it's so fake, man, so fake, it's not even funny. So anyway, let's get back to this. Thomas said that self-education to learn about experiences, not your own, is one of the key ways that allyship differs from mentorship, which often focuses offering advice. So allyship demands more. Example of real allyship include using your power to create opportunities for colleagues of color that are necessary for promotion or that give them a chance to share their expertise. Studies have found that the contribution of Black women in particular are less likely to be noticed or remembered. So a good ally acts to give credit where it's due. And we know they're not good. Let's be real. These folks ain't good at giving nobody credit. They want all of the accolades for themselves. When it comes down to giving credit to others, woo, they are terrible at it. All right. Actually, challenging racism is another part of allyship, which white people fall short although less than half of the white, black, and Latino employees in the survey said they have spoken up about racial discrimination at work, the consequences were much harsher for women of color who did. That's very true. And we see those stories now. You'll get uh, a black man or woman, it'll get a noose hung around them, or um, they'll have racial slurs written in the bathroom and all that kind of stuff. When they go to complain, they get retaliated on for complaining. And we've seen this over and over and over and over. The stories are always coming out in the news. And high IQ people say absolutely nothing. They see it going on. And in many cases, know who's doing it, but they'll stay totally silent. No, you are not allies at work to us. So let's get back to this. Black and Latina women were twice as likely as white people to reporting facing retaliation for speaking up about racism, including being excluded from meetings and even being fired. Exactly. Usually when you complain and you are a black person, they will retaliate on you for that. And eventually they'll be nitpicking until they find a reason to fire you. That's usually how it goes down. Often when you are white, you have safety net that people of color do not have. And you have to use it in support of these causes if you truly believe in them. One way to be more proactive ally if you are white is to show support for your colleagues during those meetings rather than after. If you see somebody argue something related to race or racial discrimination, you just don't stay silent. Okay? You don't stay silent. 
you don't pat them on the back, you don't totally disagree, you know, totally agree and all that stuff. In the meeting, you say absolutely what we're going to do about it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, look, it is going to take way more than an article for people to change. And in, in many cases, they don't want to change. This is the way they've always been in the workplace. You know, there's no concern about us in that workplace. You are literally a sitting duck if things go wrong. But, you know, you can always fight back in your own way. And, you know, many of our people are more inclined to sue, especially after being terminated for something either you didn't do or they set you up and you were terminated because that happens a lot too. They, they will set you up to be terminated. And one good thing, and I'm going to say this again, civil court, we got a really good shot in civil court. Black people do way better in civil court. And a lot of times that's where these type of cases go. So if you are wrongly terminated, don't be afraid to fight it. You can fight it and you should. You should be compensated for the lost and, and everything they put you through. Especially if you, you know, you should keep documentation of any racial incidents and even times when you reported it and nothing happened. Make sure you document everything. Everything. But y'all, please tell me what you think. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.